I told you off camera that what, what I want to do, just in, in, no different than any other guest, is really humanize them in a way that I'm able to bring something out of them that nobody probably ever has gotten. And it can be something as simple as, oh, I really like popcorn or I really like this or I really like that. So as we're talking about it, as I was looking into, you know, the history of your evolution, right? The author, the romantic novelist. Yes. Please enlighten me <laughs> to, we all see the State of the Union, right? Very articulate. You represent the culture and a people so proudly, right? Uh, how did we come up with that or, or what, what, what kind of sparked that interest? So I'm the, my mom was a librarian when I was growing up, so I loved reading. I've been mm. reading since my earliest memory. I actually tried to write a romance novel when I was in middle school, but... What? Yeah, it was really short because I couldn't date till I was 16. So it really, oh. I was missing a lot of the context. Okay. But okay. Uh, watched a lot of General Hospital and, uh, you know, One Life to Live as a Child. But always loved romance. Used to read romance novels with my sisters. Mm. And I have a, a great aunt who passed away. She used to just collect them. Mm. When I was in law school, I wanted to write a book. Okay. And I'd always wanted to write a book. The book I wanted to write was actually based on my ex-boyfriend's dissertation. He was a chemical physicist. What? Yes. What's his name? So I can... Well, his name is Derek Williams. He's actually in the book, in prison, uh, because it was a bad breakup. Um, we broke up long before I used to... But this is fictional or non-fictional? For real, he is a chemical physicist. In fiction, he is in prison in the book, because I was still bitter when I wrote the book. Oh. Um, I mean, we were friends by then, because yeah. I was... But, you know... How did he feel about that? He understood why. I'll say less. He, 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 yeah. He knows why he's in there. Okay. So I wanted to write a romance novel. I wanted to write a spy novel. Okay. But it was the late 90s, and black writers couldn't get published in espionage. Mm. Um, just think about it. There, there were no black spy novelists. And right. then the only places where black women really could get published in mass fiction was romance. So I made my spies kill all the same people they were going to kill, but I made them fall in love, and it became a romance novel. And that's how I, I started writing romance. Listen here. <laughs> Well, we can end it right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got some, because I never would have know, uh, you know, known that, but more importantly, just for you to be able to, you know, being a public of official or being a person of influence, right? I'm pretty sure you've seen your life change <laughs> in, a, in a blink of an eye, right? What are the perks of it, of it? And what's the bad things about it as well? So I am an introvert okay. in, in the truest sense of the word. I really, I appreciate the access I have. I appreciate my ability to engage people, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm kind of quiet and private. Okay. And so the, the challenge has been that I can't be that way as much as I used to. I, I spend a lot of time in public spaces in ways that had I thought about it, I probably wouldn't have been right. like, huh. Normally, in, in yeah. normal circumstances. I would be watching a, you know, a Star Trek marathon by myself. Wow. Yes. But the, the upside is that, and the benefits of what, I mean, look, I got to be on Star Trek. So yeah. I, that, was, that was fun. But there's, um, there's an access that's created to people and to conversation mm -hmm. sometimes you never imagine. Right. And as someone who really is in public service because I care about people, yes. it's been truly a fantastic opportunity for me to get to just engage people in really different ways. Right. Uh, things I don't think I would do, people I don't think I would meet, I get to meet and I get to do. And I'm a better person every time I get to engage with people, even if we disagree. Right. And so, you know, yes, you give up privacy, you give up alone time, but you gain access you get to, you know, live out your childhood dreams of walking on, you know, the, I get to, I got to descend uh, from a spacecraft. So, you know, I, that was kind of cool. So you're, you're a very sci-fi preferable show watcher. I watch everything. Now, sci-fi, I love science fiction. Okay. But I have a deep and almost religious commitment to television. Okay. Yeah. So take us there <laughs> to your... If we still had TV guy, yes, right, which we don't. That's well, we sad. have it in social media form or whatever <sighs> because of Twitter or Instagram. What would be the top three most visited 
TV networks or shows or series or movies in Miss Abrams catalog? So right now, uh, I, I curate kind of differently. So I just finished watching Eureka, which is a sci-fi show that okay. I missed when it came out, but ended up binge watching the last, the full five episodes, five seasons. Mm. But yesterday I watched uh, the FBI, uh, they come on CBS, so mm -hmm. FBI, FBI Most Wanted, FBI International. I will watch the three Law and Orders that just premiered because it just, it's back. I need the Equalizer to come back. Uh, Abbott Elementary, which is really important. Oh, yes. I and probably. I am waiting till uh, I get some time so I can catch up with Rick and Morty because the new season is out and I need to see it. But I've already watched the, late, the, le the latest season of Solar Opposites, which is also quite good. So we have a lot of time <laughs> on, our, on our hands. That's what we're trying to say. But even <laughs> then, I think what's, what's most important for me and that I do a due diligence for you is to bring out, like I said, the humanistic side. Because oftentimes I've been guilty or have been kind of thrusted on a platform and people forget that you're human too. If somebody were to rush me and, and slap me or say hurtful things to me, I'm not bulletproof. You know what I mean? And when a person may say, oh, she got all that time to do all this and do all that, how she gonna help our community? Well, how would you say, or how would you answer that question? One, I love television because it is a great way to decompress. Mm -hmm. Any person who tells you they don't take time for themselves, something's gonna, uh, 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 it's gonna burst out somewhere. Right. And so I can either decompress by letting myself read and watch television, mm -hmm. or I can let it spill out in other ways that aren't beneficial to others. So for me, yeah. that's, you know, the, the phrase is self-care. People can use different phrases to describe it, but for me, it's one of the ways I help myself come back to me. Mm -hmm. Number two, I spend most of my time thinking about how I can do good for others, and it should never be a distraction yes. to take care of yourself when your mission is to help others. And and that can sound you know very highfalutin and self-aggrandizing, and I don't mean it that way. For me, it's about I understand people better because I know what it means when you have all of this time taken right. from you and you get one hour, what do you decide to watch? Correct. Are you going to do the Food Network so you can do four other things while you're listening yeah. to Bobby Flay, you know, figure out how to make, you know, you know some type of some, some pierogi, yeah. exactly. Or yeah. are you going to spend this time doing something else? And for me, it, to your point about humanization, I want elected officials who actually understand what real life is like. Yes. And I'm I'm very real. <laughs> right. And I feel it. Matters. <laughs> and and I think we need as a people, and I'm not talking about no age, race, ethnicity. I'm talking about American people, more specifically Georgians, need people who are in positions of power that are tapped in to it. And I think I could speak to this when you're so used to when you so used to pouring in other people's cup. It's so important for you to find ways to fill your cup up because it's not fair. At, at the end of the day, you know, my mom always says, what color is your battery? You know what I mean? And it's like, man, my battery's, you know, green today, mom. Oh, I ain't gonna lie to you, mom. It's yellowish red, you know. But we wanna operate off of premium, you know, um, time that, you know, we know that Miss Abrams, she's getting the best version of myself. You know, my son, he's getting the best version of myself. My, my, my significant other, my family, my friends, my loved ones, like they are getting the best version of myself. And the only way I'm able to do that is if I'm charged up and if I'm refilled.